the servers that I'm now responsible for, how do I SSH to this thing? Um, how, how do I get a remote command shell so that I can do stuff and not have to RDP to this thing? And I want to stay on my Mac or I want to stay on my Linux machine. And uh, leading up to now, that's been kind of a painful story. That story is now finally improving. And when you have a when you, when you have cross pl platform management tools that allow you to model things, whether it's DSC on Linux, whether it's Chef, whether it's Puppet, and you can target m multiple platforms, it's also nice to be able to get into remote shells on those things to test them. Once we start talking about getting into production, if you're SSHing out to your servers in production, bad, bad, bad. That's the same thing as RDPing out to servers in production, which is bad, bad, bad. And so you should have an SSH jar, a WinRM jar, and, a, uh, and an RDP jar. And those should all go money towards parties every time you have to do that. But as far as, as, far as like the, my test environment, or I want to validate some config management, or I want to validate the tools, the tooling I'm putting into place, and I, want, I need to get a remote shell to do some exploratory stuff, or I need to test how to actually accomplish a management task so that I can stick it into my config management. Now that, now that is a, a real value for customers to be able to do. So I have a question. I have this terminal up. It is currently running bash. Nobody has burned an effigy yet, so it's okay. Yes. No. yes. What? Yes. What are you pointing at? reading is the best. Well, I know, but I didn't think you would read it, so I was <laughs> telling you. Well, now, I have a question for you. Take a, I've already installed PowerShell v6 on here. Take a guess. How do you think I start PowerShell? PowerShell. Click on. Click on. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the start menu. <laughs> so I have it coming up showing you the, the, the PowerShell stuff in my profile. But ta-da, now it's PowerShell. Hey, look at this. LS. We're going to talk about this. This is the actual ls command on Linux, not the alias that you're accustomed to in Windows that points to get child item. And we're going to talk about why this is so important. Um, however, I want to point something else out. You know, I can do clear. That's Linux, right? Yeah. But now I can do, since I'm under PowerShell, dir. I can do cls. Oh, come on, guys. How cool is that? Yeah. When I first installed this, I just about fell apart on the floor going, <laughs> If you, yeah, if you've ever had to write like a loop or, a f uh, or an if statement in Bash and you decided to get that you should just go to the bar instead, having PowerShell add a little bit saner structure for those loops and if statements makes your day so much nicer. So question, how do you do the list of commands in PowerShell? Get command. How do you tell how many commands you have? Uh, pipe it to WC. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Measure. So, this is the current amount of commands that you have. And I want you to notice I have a pipeline and it worked just as expected as you would expect on Windows. Yes? Yep. How do you get help for a command? Man. <laughs> no. How many of you on Windows use man? I do. I do. Here's the problem. This is, this is yeah, on, on Linux, <coughs> I didn't specify what I wanted, but when you run man, that's Linux man. That's the real man, not the alias for get help. And I think that's quite sexist, to be honest with you. <laughs> that you have to go to a man to get help. So what you're saying is though that a man can't help you with PowerShell on Linux. A man can't help you with PowerShell unless. Oh, did you guys just see what I just did to find all your aliases that you can use? Gal, this is why I think PowerShell is, is so wonderful. It's non-sexist. It, you get support for both man and gal. <laughs> oh, come on. Anyway, so all right, get help. Get help. Star. I don't know. Uh, process. Star. Now I want to warn you guys about something. This is going to work really well for me, not for you. Maybe some of you, but I want to just give you a little hint, because this came up, uh, I was working with a bunch of Linux guys that put this on, and they were having all kinds of problems. Some terminals do not respond well to the, the you know those little zeros that fly by when it's the progress zeros that fly by? 
Some terminals do not do well with that progress bar, and what you get is garbage, and you never see what it actually does. Now, you can sometimes fix it with the terminal, but I just want to show you something that, and I had a Linux guy ask me, he goes, hey, do you happen to know if there's a way, because I think it's the progress bar that's screwing up, do you happen to know of a way to turn that off? And I'm like, you know, I think I might remember, but I don't think I know. And he goes, wait a minute, I just Googled it and found it. It's your blog from about five years ago. I'm like, oh, okay. Because <laughs> I did it for Windows, but watch. So I'm just going to um, use uh, VS Code. Ah, uh, see, you can use code in here. Come on, come on. This yeah. one is VS Code across platform. You get the same tip. Oh, come on, it's so good. I'm going to do dollars. I'm going to do Whoops. Profi. Don't work. You don't want to tell us. So is a profi like a selfie? Yeah, I, I, well, it looks not good. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I think Will's going around doing profis. Wow, it's gonna be tough. HR. <laughs> so it's the same. It does it the same? If you look up how to turn off the progress bar for Windows PowerShell on Windows, it's the exact same way. Are you kind of getting this, that this is going to be real familiar to you? Advanced functions are written just like advanced functions. It's all the same, but it's Linux. <clears throat> so you have to think about the Linux side to this. If you want to write a function, it's got to be Linuxy. if you're trying to do something with the Linux OS. But and so one thing Jason pointed out, like some of our convenience aliases that we're, we've been comfortable with, like LS instead of get child item, oh, you, since those are gone. Do you want to have this conversation? I don't know. I do. do. Really? I do. Okay. Because you were just talking about writing scripts and advanced functions and stuff, and do not use aliases in your scripts and advanced functions because it will make it much harder to go cross-platform. Because you, the assumption on what aliases are there may be wrong. Now, I just want to throw something out because what do you, you know, the, the, here's what they did. You guys are used to Windows aliases. And you go to a Windows alias, we have something for LS, right? We have for clear. Those are all pointing to PowerShell commands. I've had Windows guys come up and say, those aliases don't work correctly on my Mac or, some, or whatever Linux box. Are they going to fix that? <laughs> no. And, 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 and here's kind of the point. As a matter of fact, Snover's made this very clear. We're not taking tools away from the Linux guys. And this is something the Linux community needs to understand. Out of respect for the quality of their tools, we don't think we know better. Get child out and works. But that's not the LS command. So they didn't overwrite those aliases. Now here's kind of the challenge to it. I got used to using those aliases. Now I'm in Linux and those aliases work differently. Now I go back to Windows. Here's what I would like them to do, Lee, is <laughs> <laughs> let's get rid of these aliases on both sides. If I want LS on Windows, I'll go get LS for Windows. So now, now, at the time, remember at the time, the reason for these aliases was to help Linux guys get started on Windows. So there was a good reason for it. And that reason still may be valid, but it's kind of like mm, maybe a rethink. But you guys didn't have that conversation. But it's important to understand that this has been done very respectfully of the Linux community, and it continues to go on like that. So be kind of careful with these aliases. Never, of course, use them in your scripts, but be kind of careful getting used to the, the, the aliases that are out there. Yeah? Are we going to have to be really careful about using single and double quotes now as well? Well, I... No, quoting qu 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 in PowerShell is the same behavior. It's the same behavior, yeah. Right? Well, yeah. Case sensitivity. Oh, I love it! Yes, <laughs> landmine. <laughs> so, is uh, PowerShell case sensitive? <laughs> except for when it is. Yeah, except for when it is. That's right. Is Windows case sensitive? Except for what it is. Except for what it is. Registries. No, that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's case preservative but not sensitive, right? Is Linux case sensitive? Oh, yeah. Yes. So I want you to imagine something that the Microsoft, that the Microsoft, yeah, the Microsoft creates PowerShell for Linux and makes it like Windows and case insensitive. How's the Linux community going to be, behave? Poorly. Oh, poorly, poorly, poorly. No, it's case sensitive. Now, does that make it harder for a Windows guy? Yeah, but grow up a little bit. It'll be okay. No, but you, you get it. So it, it, it is going to be case sensitive. Um, when you're working with the Linux files and the stuff and their commands and stuff like that, it will be. 
it's is that really just a, end up being a function of the of the file system provider then that the file system provider for Linux is case sensitive and the file system provider for Windows is effectively not. I'm the funny one. I don't know. <coughs> But I would I would imagine that, and somebody you know can we can you know get that addressed. Easy test is whether or not the variables and other things that don't depend on the files. Yeah, variables. You know the things that you would do in PowerShell that would normally not be case sensitive, like variables. Those are not case sensitive, but the um, the stuff that is normally Linux case sensitive is going to be case sensitive. Um, and so the. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, that, oh, so the, the, so the, this is this is good. This is. This is important to understand when we talk about case sensitivity and environment variables and where, where we actually are, right? So environment variables in Linux are different than environment variables in, on Windows in the sense that, like in PowerShell we have, you know, variables in our PowerShell context and we have environment variables. For the most part, the behavior of variables in like Bash are like environment variables. So when I called into PowerShell here, I just set a couple of local variables for, oh, the, it cleared the screen because you have that near handy dandy function. Um, let's just do, uh, oh, it was? Oh, cool. Oh, there is, awesome. Um, so I just set some environment variables here before we went into the PowerShell process. Environment variables are case sensitive on uh, on Linux, on Windows, they're not. So if you are setting environment variables and referencing them in a very uh, very loosey-goosey way, that, that might come and bite you, right? Because the, the environment variable you set on Windows with all caps and then you reference it later with lowercase or mixed case is not going to work as expected when you cross platforms. Now, the next thing, because we're kind of driving through this, pipelines. Pipelines, pipelines. I live and breathe pipelines. But pipelines are different on the two. I want you to notice something. I want you to see if you can see something kind of unusual. Because when I first installed this when before we were doing the video stuff, and I think it was like Alpha 7 or something, they, I did this. Get process, select property <coughs> name. Did, did that work as expected? Oops. Uh, I, my buffer's not big enough. But did that work as expected? Sure. Yeah. yeah. It did. It seems to. Yeah. Don't, don't freak out. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it worked as expected. So you guys have used Get Member before, right? Mm -hmm. And you guys know that with the structured data that we use across the pipeline and Windows objects, you get properties and methods, that kind of stuff. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's all good. And there's something, though, that I noticed that was kind of weird when I looked at this. I expected to see methods and properties. Now I'm not going to find it. Where is it? But I saw something that was kind of weird. Look. Now, if you're a Linux guy, you know standard in, standard out. You breathe that's your pipeline. You breathe this, right? This is, this, is, this is how you make the world go round. It's not how we do it in Windows, because we've got objects. We're much more useful than you. <laughs> um, but, well, no, wait, don't worry. <laughs> but, Linux guys, this is how we do everything. We manipulate the strings, the text. We manip This is what we do. This is how we manipulate. I did this. I wanted to see if this would work. I saw standard in, standard out, so I did this. Get process. Grep. PowerShell. Grep is a Linux command, expecting standard in. Mm -hmm. Yet process is creating a structured object. I can't wait to see the collision. <laughs> Isn't that neat and magical? <laughs> now, people on the Linux, that are working on the Linux side, they can go through and explain how, and they've worked very hard on this because this used to be slower, they had to go through all this weird stuff and they've, they've really improved this, but Think about what this does. A Linux guy can combine the use of PowerShell and the commands that they are most accustomed to using to achieve the results that they want. Windows guys can look up and start to learn some of the Linux stuff and send it to some of the PowerShell stuff that they want to use with it. The blending of this 
Think about it. Cats and dogs living together, hug it out, hug it out. <laughs> oh, come on, are you waiting for lunch or something? What happens here? <laughs> so we've 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 switched to piping text once we once we drop into that native executable or or if we've piped into a bash script or something like that now we're now we switch into processing text yep it's just like on windows if i pipe to a native executable like if i piped it if i if i was in windows and i piped something through find or something like that right yeah yeah so it's not a change in behavior If it's an, if it is a native, unless that command somehow supports creating CLI XML to pipe into the next PowerShell command, um, yes, that's kind of the behavior. Um, I'll let, go ahead. Yeah. So do some of the uh, the other um, like logical operands still works? Like, can I do like <coughs> command and and command? So if the first one is successful, like it comes back to exit code zero, then do the second thing. Does that still because that, that works fine in Bash? Does it interplay here? Anthony, it who, Anthony who unfortunately couldn't be here, had a couple of examples of just that. Okay. Um, and awesome. I'm going to see if I can get his stuff uploaded so you can see it. Also, take a look at that play-by-play. -play. It's free at the portal site. Okay. Um, he well, let's just, let's just try it. Hang on. Hang, just, okay. just try it. Well, then go. Oh, go. <laughs> so, so if I do, like, uh, you know, get process... Well, in that case, want, want, want. So, but that, yeah, I think we explored it. Right, but what you can do, so uh, we're you going to talk about shebangs. Well, and, and the notes in this version part. So no, right. I wasn't going to talk about it, but you can. You okay, so, quick. yeah, 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 real, real quick. Um, so there's a, there's this, uh, in, in Windows, we use a file extension to figure out how to run something very often. Um, so there's a def usually a default interpreter or, de or a default execution engine for, like, um, you know, .ps1, the default association for that is opening notepad, right? Rather, and you can change that to a PowerShell if you want to be, if you want to be uh, a little loosey-goosey. Um, on Linux, how they tend to do that for scripts and, and things that have an interpreter is a shebang. And so there's a line at the top of the script that says what interpreter to use to run this particular command. And you can do that with PowerShell. You can point to the PowerShell um, interpreter and have uh, your PS1 file, or you don't even need the extension if you have the shebang in there, um, and have it, have it execute that way. So you can use bash to call PowerShell commands just by providing the script name, or the, you know, the, the relative path to the script unless it's on path, and then you can get that behavior of that and and because that is a really nice convenience. So if you need it, that's that's a good way to get it and be able to call into PowerShell as well as any other script or native executable on, on Linux. There yeah. is an open issue on github.com to fix that. Okay. So but until that point, <laughs> you can get around it. So the next thing that I did when this when I first got it was I'll explain the change in a second. What am I trying to do? SSH. When I am. Apparently spelled correctly. PSRP. Remote. I'm trying to, let's keep it simple right now. I'm trying to remote to a, another box using what we see as PowerShell remoting, right? It is DC, the main controller just happens to be DC, so it's a Windows box. I'm trying to go from Linux to Windows. So the first, I entered this in. I hit enter, what do you think is going to happen? You install SSH. It's hosting. Hang on. It is hosting. That makes a difference. All you technical memes that already know this, hang on. When I first did this, it exploded. Kaboom. Kaboom and it's going to explode for you. You can get it to work. However, right now, remoting is running over SSH. 
I actually really like that because from my perspective, working with customers that have, how many of you here had fight like hell to get the uh, ports open for WinRM? Yeah. I can't get them. Because the security team would say, you know, security, the, guy, the guys that put no in innovation. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, Change WinRM to use RDP. And <laughs> well, yeah, they, no, there's ways around it. Yeah, I like that. But you, you get this. You know, it's, part of me says, you know, guys, if you just use SSH in the first place, all this remote crap would have just worked for everybody. But right now, you can, you're using SSH to do the remoting. Now, how many of you have actually set this up? Okay. But I know you're really smart, so you got it to work the first time. No, a couple of times. Yeah, it takes a couple of times. Guys, the instructions are out on, uh, under the demos under GitHub, uh, the, the GitHub repo. Uh, using SSH remoting, follow the instructions carefully. You're going to need to put on um, um, SSH keys. Huh? The SSH keys. Yeah, you're going to have to set up SSH, do the SSH key. All, you know, all that. They have instructions for it, and then you're going to have to modify the SSH config. And if you do it incorrectly, which the instructions they give you lead you to do it incorrectly, it's not going to work. And then you're going to be sorry and unhappy and all that kind of stuff. Of course, they want to make this easier in the future, but you can get it to work. I want to remind you, alpha, sometimes as they flip alpha versions, remoting will break, for, or one direction or the other. Right now, as Anthony and I were doing, it's, it was working in both directions, from Linux to Windows, Windows to Linux. But think of the concept here for a second. I can be on any box, anywhere, anytime, and manage whatever I want the way that I want. People used to make fun of me. You got a Mac, man. You suck. All we right. still well, do. Okay. Oh. That's not why. <laughs> That's not why. <laughs> it, was, it was one of the myriad of reasons. Right? Oh. <laughs> but here's oh, the thing. On. I should be able to choose what client I want to use to manage my environment, right? Yes. Kind of the point. So you're saying cross platforms. Could we go to Cisco routers as well if they have a Linux kind of I haven't system? tested that. So I would, I would put you out to the forums to check for that. I would Sorry. imagine yes, but I haven't tested it. So you could use the native SSH client uh, unless unless you had PowerShell running on that device, um, and if it if it was available for that architecture, uh, then it, then you could configure remoting. If but I don't I don't know if it would have it for that architecture. So you've got remoting at some point, and I don't know anything special. So uh, I'm just going to talk to Joey while he's here, uh, but I don't know anything special. The idea is that I'm a GIA guy, but by the way, it's not a disease. That's, that's, that's just enough administration stuff. Um, so with SSH, you can't really do that right now, although there's probably a way that you might be able to figure it out. Anyways, I don't want to, we would like to have the endpoints and all that kind of stuff, and you think of that as PowerShell remoting with WinRM and all that kind of stuff. So I know there is a direction for that. I don't know when that's happening, if that's actually going to work, that kind of stuff. But since we're so new into this, but just kind of keep in mind that currently it's over SSH. And it works. And you can do invoke command. I haven't been able to get um, implicit remoting to work, but that's another thing I'm going to ask about. But we're in alpha, so that kind of stuff. One other thing, and this is something that is really big for you, mm -hmm. um, that I want to mention of and then open stuff up. This is kind of an intro of why to try to get started with this, because it's not as hard as you think. And it can actually be really fun. I've had a lot of fun with Ubuntu lately. I can't even say it properly, but I've had an amazing amount of fun with it. So, okay, that was supposed to be geek humor, and none of you. <laughs> the other thing is this. You, this has been out longer than PowerShell and Linux has been out, but DSC for Linux. You put o, bless you. You put OMI on the Linux boxes, and you can now publish out configs and configure Linux. There's Linux resources. and. You know, Windows is very complicated. There's a lot of products involved with Windows. And one of our challenges is we don't have enough DSE resources yet to do everything. So we're scrambling for that. On Linux, we pretty much got this figured out, how to manipulate a file. <laughs> but it's, so, it's, a, it's a triumvirate. File, process, and service. Once you have that, you kind of have the trifecta for managing things on Linux. And with the beta one that came Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's file process and package. Yeah. Yeah. With the, yeah. the Linux guys going, thank God you corrected that. Um, so the, um, uh, when the first version of this came out like two and a half years ago, <laughs> two and a half years ago, 
I could get it to do Apache and WordPress and with DSE all just shebang. So keep something in mind. I know that the Linux guys are probably doing a lot of configuration management already. Puppet, Chef, whatever. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. But the, you can work DSC into this if that's part of the process. And I, I was thinking you would talk maybe a little bit about the management side of configuration for Linux, Chef, Puppet, those kind of things. Nah. Okay, fine. Uh, no. Let's talk about uh, Ansible. No, uh, no, no. Let, <laughs> yeah. I thought you said you want to talk about configuration management. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> um, no. Uh, I, yeah. So um, one thing uh, that I wanted to kind of bring up, just as a as a quick gotcha, that you might encounter as you're working back and forth between Linux and Windows, um, things that uh, are, might get a little painful: file encoding and uh, and line endings. Right, so in the VS Code instance here, you got it down at the bottom, it's gonna tell you what your file encoding is and what your line ending is. Now, on Windows, we're pretty spoiled because Windows for the most part is like the honey badger of dealing with file encodings. And it, it just doesn't care, right? You give it, you give it Unix, and other than Notepad, uh, if you give it you know, Linux, uh, Unix line endings, it's fine. If you give it UTF-8, UTF-8 with bomb, uh, UTF-16, whatever, it, it figures it all out and it just works. Most tools on Linux expect either like ASCII or UTF-8 without BOM and usually really, 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 really do not like Windows line endings. The CRLF uh, it can be very, very horrible. Where this comes into play a lot is if you're using Git and you're using and, and you're and you're using Git to and then copying something from your Git repo over to a Linux machine or or a Mac or, a Mac or something, because Git by default will do this uh, little tricky thing, auto CRLF it's called. It's a setting it's a setting within Git, and so it says, hey, you're on Windows. I'm going to try to be helpful, and I will I will give you Windows line endings for all these things, and I won't make the file change. I'll just you know switch it all up for you, and then when I when you push that something to another Git repo, I'll flip them all back to, Win to Linux line endings. That sounds like a really, really helpful thing until you, ha until you like, copy a file across or you uh, spin up a Docker instance and you mount your file system underneath and, and uh, a, a, to, the, to a container and things go badly. Um, so if you're going to be doing a lot of cross-platform work, there are a couple of handy Git settings. I've got a blog post about this out on stevenmorowski.com. There's a couple of handy Git settings and a couple of handy VS Code settings where you can set the default line endings. You can set Git to uh, change your line endings. That uh, Anything that's got a CRLF, change it to LF as you push it, as well as anything you clone down, make sure it stays that it's the, uh, it's the Linux line endings or the Unix line endings. So, there are some things you can do to add a little bit of sanity to this. You won't catch everything, but it will help a lot. I want to give you one little uh, thing that uh, I was going to have Anthony actually tell you about while he was here, but I'm going to tell you about it, and then we'll open it up for questions and, and stuff like that. So Anthony Nocentino is, is like a PhD in Linux internals. The guy is as salty Linux guy as you can possibly be. So, I mean, beard, scrub, you know, no personality, mean, all that stuff. Um, <laughs> That's, yeah, it, it, oddly enough. Um, so he sent me, he, here was the deal. We were going to do this, 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 this video with Jeffrey Snover on cross-platform stuff. So he's going to be the, the Linux representation, the, you know, the mean Linux person. And I'm the, the, the happy-go-lucky Windows guy. We're all happy on the Windows side. Have you met us? <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing. He needed to, he knew a little bit about PowerShell, but didn't know PowerShell. So he needed to ramp up on it. So of course he's going to, you know, do the Don Jones book. And by the way, I do this because you know it's Don Jones. He's got all that going on. And so he's gonna, <laughs> he's like, uh, the Don Jones book, and he's going to ask me questions, right? Because he knows pipelines. He just doesn't know PowerShell pipelines. You know, that, that, that kind of concepts. So he's working on it, he's working on it, he's asking questions over like a couple of weeks, getting this PowerShell stuff done, and he's starting to do some pretty cool things, I mean, really rapidly, right? He's really adopting it fast. And Linux guys adopt PowerShell really fast as soon as they start to understand structured data across the pipeline, they, boom. So he sends me an email, 
And I, I was hoping he would, because he had the email, but he sends me an email, he says, and I get this from Linux guys all the time when they first start learning PowerShell. He says, which one do you think I like better? There was a line that was in Linux that was some kind of word that I've never seen and was dash T, dash T, dash L, dash P, dash this, dash that, pipe, some other funky word, dash this, dash that, dash this, dash that, and then he had a line that was like, get process, pipe, select object, property, blah, 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 sort, blah, 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 do this, do this, do this. Which do you think I prefer? And actually, I had gotten the email, and I just like, I'm going to go drink, and I'll answer it. I just don't want to hear it, because it's going to be, Linux is great, because Linux is God, and Linux is good, and this stuff sucks, and it takes too long to type the PowerShell stuff. Even with tab completion, it takes two characters more. And it, so I said, OK, tell me which one. And he sent me an email about back, and he says, of course, the git dash process pipe select dash. And I, I, I Skyped with him, and I said, so you explain to me why you think you like that very verbose line better. And he says, do you think in that first line that I gave you that I remember what any of that crap is? <laughs> <laughs> this is a guy with a freaking PhD in Linux and Kernel for Christ. And he's sitting there going, I got to man page this crap all the time. Guess what I know now? I know exactly what this line means using PowerShell. And when I'm writing a script like I'm doing right now, I'm going to be able to read it two weeks from now. <laughs> yeah. right? And I thought to myself, boy, if I could only get some of the salty Linux guys to try it just enough to experience that, maybe they might want to add PowerShell as one of the several tools in their toolbox. I just thought that was really cool. Yeah, parameters, uh, yeah if you're looking for arguments, parameter sanity, consistent parsing, Show them, uh, show them a little bit of script block parameters, and you will just. Let's get that example posted, right? Then we just reference our IT guys there. Look at that. I, I, I will tell Anthony to do that because he'll put it up on a blog post, and we can use that as a as a reference. We, okay. matter of fact, he did. We didn't force him to talk about it in the play by play because I because he was he said I told him I said I want you to do this whole thing and say why you liked it on the play by play. It's going to go out to you know millions of people. You know, uh, he's like no. Why not? They'll take, they'll take my Linux card away. <laughs> <laughs> and they, uh, anyways. They won't let them back into the Usenix Association. So uh, we're going to open up for questions, but do you, do, Windows guys, is this something you might want to play with? Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it, you know what, there's plenty of resources to start to learn the Linux operating system. I think you might find it's not as scary as you think it is, and by using PowerShell, you're not going to get, you know, stuck with all of the <laughs> terse minutia that would usually slow you down. This will help you speed up that process. For the Linux people, is it something to try for to have your tool set you think? Definitely. Yeah? 100%. While Microsoft didn't make this for that reason, I am personally making that one of my personal crusades to make the Linux guys and the Windows guys finally start to work together because we can both learn from each other. Yeah. On this. And I think that if we stop siloing, it's like security guys. Instead of siloing the security guys, hug a security guy. Well, maybe that went too far. But yeah. anyway. Do the HR appropriate thing. That might be a handshake, an elbow bump, a polite nod, something like that. Elbow bumps are allowed under HR? Because I can turn that into a pretty, oh. Well, well, well they are in the Chef RFC around hugging. How about just the gang sign? <laughs> there you go. I, I don't think I can teach Linux guys the gang sign, because they'll never be able to get their fingers to move the right way. So. <laughs> Um, guys, what question? They're broken from using like a Dvorak key layout and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. you can ask questions, that kind of thing, but for the most part, let me just kind of formally end it by saying thank you very much and then we'll take your questions until they open up the door and I have to get off the stage. Yep. So thank you very much. We have one in the back of the room here. Better than Java. Uh, <laughs> if you got Java in there already, you don't have security. So um. <laughs> um, I am not qualified to answer that question. I'd point you to somebody like Lee Holmes at the back of the room, uh, Joey, who's floating around here, Michael Green. I think I saw him come in uh, mm. to answer that. Yeah. Like Linux doesn't. So let's yeah. be honest about yeah. this. It, Windows has no more or less than Linux. So yeah. but I'd say consider the scope. It's not like the whole. So you're talking about a small random thing as the profiles. Yeah. Interesting.
remember the operating system's not dependent on .NET Core, right? Like it's not like. Yeah, it's not wired into the OS like the full framework is, right? Where the, like there's a lot more tight coupling there, so it's a little, it's it's more it's more analogous to having a Java runtime, except you know you know Java just another vulnerable <laughs> application, um, yeah. <laughs> I like that answer. That's so, Lee, any, any, any t I, thoughts? I it, talking about security just in general, you can just spin yourself for hours talking about stuff. When people complain about Windows being insecure, they're not talking about the .NET framework itself having issues. They're just saying that people are attacking Windows. People also attack Linux. Uh, the talk we're giving today at 2 o'clock does talk about some comparative security between PowerShell and, for example, the eight, ten other things available on this Mac, Java, Perl, PHP, Python, all that kind of stuff. So uh, it's, it's really a hard thing to just talk about in isolation. But absolutely, bringing PowerShell onto a machine does not make it any less secure. That's true of Windows. It's true of Mac. I like that answer, too. Yes, sir. So uh, since. Uh, running Linux commands basically just like dump text on the screen, kind of like write host. Mm -hmm. Puppies die still. It's not. It's not like white host. It's not like white host. White host is console output, not standard out. Standard out can get carried from command to command. Um, so it's it's more like out default. So the puppies are safe. The puppies are safe. I want to bring this up. Puppies are safe if you're on Linux <coughs> because this is how Linux does things, right? Yep. So puppies are safe. Uh, good point. Puppies are safe. Yes. Um, can I use VI and Vim uh, through oh. PowerShell and Unix and then building off that yes. I really hate myself and write my PowerShell scripts in it? Yes. Um, and there's actually, all the time. and there's there, there there's some syntax highlighting and stuff available for PowerShell and Vim. Um, yeah. However, just as a side note, yes, you can. And believe me, I agree with you. There's times just to go, you know, VI and just jump in, do, do whatever it is you want. But I just, I just, this makes me happy, so happy, unbelievably happy. VS Code is, to me, one of the best things. Well, it's not one of the best things Microsoft has done, but it's definitely. Yeah, it's good. And yeah. you have the PowerShell integrated terminal there, too. Um, I, I passionately love it. Yeah. So yes, you can, you can Vim it up, and uh, yeah. You can turn on Vim mode, too. Yeah. Yep. Oh, well, is that what you were going to say? OK, great. <laughs> so you may not be able to answer, but the get service that you're working on, is that for system D? Or is it extracting? I don't yeah, have I figured that you could information. Maybe, yeah. maybe I, somebody in the back of the answer. Yeah, my no tengo ni una idea. Yeah, my <laughs> no idea. Get service is just an artifact of the build right. from Windows, but I don't know. Um, we can try to hunt down with Michael Green, find Joey, talk to him, see what the the idea. Because I was thinking it was System D, but I don't know. It'll still those those commands still exist and still work. Yeah. So okay. Well, hey guys, go have some. Yeah, system cuddle. Uh, I don't think it's long <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you.